If you've just watched episode 5 of the Undead Unlucked anime, where Andy and Fuko first joined the Union, you would have also like been this. introduced to the other members, the Artifact Apocalypse, and the mention of quests where they are tasked with capturing some Yumas. Yes, I understand. There's a lot to unpack and become familiar with, so in this video, I'll focus solely on Yumas. I will discuss who and what they are, their abilities, as well as their significance to the story. Let's get started. Yumas are some pretty weird creatures featured in the Undead Unlocked series. Yuma stands for Unidentified Mysterious Animals, kind of like how UFO is for Unidentified Flying Objects. They were made by a character called God, or Sun, and they look like something out of this world, with their wild and bizarre designs. Some of them might remind you of animals, though they're more like creepy versions of them. Others are like scary versions of regular things or ideas, or just plain old monsters. They don't follow any particular style, they mostly just take after the ideas they represent. Now, these Yumas actually represent certain rules of the world. Take, for instance, Yuma Clothes, which represents all clothing, or Yuma Past, which represents history. They're connected to Sun because he decides what rules they stand for. You can sort them into two types, the ones based on things that happen, like Yuma Winter or Yuma Burn, and the ones based on ideas, like Yuma Kindness or Yuma Thirst. Each Yuma affects things within a certain area around it. When you're in that space, you're under the Yuma's influence. Every Yuma has its own special ability that ties back to what it symbolizes, which is pretty important to the story. Yumas can also have kids by setting a rule in a very specific way. For example, Spoil created zombie kids using his powers. They can get more powerful when they join forces with their offspring in what's called Phase 2. The Union calls these offspring juniors. The Union's job includes going on quests to fight and catch these Yumas, given to them by Apocalypse, the talking book. There are even more powerful Yumas known as Master Rules, but that deserves another separate video in itself. Now let's dive deeper and discuss more facts and trivias regarding these beings. Yumas are creatures with a common early memory. They were told by God to trouble humans. They usually want to do this, but some Yumas change and start to have their own goals that are different from what God wanted. Like move and burn, some can decide to help humans if there's a good reason. Spring is a Yuma that turns people into cherry trees, not to hurt them, but it seems to want friends. Yumas represent basic things in the world, like rotting, spoil, moving, move, and other things including race, sickness, and being male or female. Yumas are strange, but they don't break the rules of reality, they act them out. Yumas are like actors playing out the rules of the universe. They're used by gods to give people conditions that match what the Yumas stand for. Whether these conditions start or stop can depend on what the person thinks or does. Yumas can make junior, Yumas by using their powers. But these kids might not act just like their Yuma parent. Spoil makes zombies and Autumn makes spiders, for example. Each Yuma brings a new rule to the world. Spoil says there was no rotting or spoilage before it came along to show off its power over decay. There are two types of Yumas, phenomenon types like Spoil and Burn, and concept types like the Season Yumas. Concept Yumas are stronger because they stand for bigger ideas than just one thing and God likes them more. There are also Master Rules Yumas, who are part of the world from the very beginning and are really strong. They're a big challenge even for multiple skill negators. Yumas grow in three steps, starting weak and small, then getting stronger and bigger two more times as they use their powers. But Spring is different. It changed in a new way when it met Fuko, which surprised the Union scientists. This change was because God made Spring use hidden powers. If Yumas lose a fight but aren't killed, they shrink into a little ball that still looks like their face. Now let's talk about some of the Yumas that appeared throughout the story. Yuma Clothes Clothy Yuma Clothes, or Clothy, represents the concept of clothing and possesses self-awareness. It was once captured by the Union but escaped and is now Andy's uniform. Clothy has the adaptive appearance of ordinary clothes, changing to mimic any fabric it contacts. It has a strong and somewhat stubborn personality, often displaying a sense of pride and irritation. It has a peculiar diet, favoring yarn. 
In terms of abilities, Clothie can shape shift to match the wearer's desired style and has the power to possess and control people after pleasing them, enhancing their abilities beyond their normal capabilities. It can also repair itself from damage rapidly. Clothie requires satisfying the desires of individuals to control them, which is why it cannot dominate Andy, who has a challenging nature to please. Initially, Clothie stayed with Andy with the intention of controlling him eventually, but it has to continually self-repair to match Andy's resilience in combat. Yuma Move Yuma Move embodies the concept of movement and functions as a rapid transport for the Union, similar to a high-speed shuttle. Its appearance is muscular with clawed hands, suggestive of both power and fantastical elements. Move is battle-hungry and thrives on conflict, eagerly engaging when fights break out. Its primary ability is teleportation, enabling instantaneous travel through tears in the sky. Move has been domesticated, showing particular loyalty to Jewess. The reason behind Move's assistance to the Union is its attraction to the tumult and ruin of conflict. Yuma Spoil Yuma Spoil symbolizes decay, a target for capture by Andy, Foucault, and Shin under Apocalypse's directive. Spoil is a morbid reminder of the transient nature of life and the inevitability of decline. It sees beauty in decay and exercises its ability to cause rapid deterioration in its vicinity. Moreover, Spoil can initiate a death countdown on individuals, culminating in their transformation into zombies upon expiration. Spoil philosophically proposes that its introduction of decay adds value to life by emphasizing its temporary nature, encouraging a greater appreciation for existence. In combat, Spoil's decay ability challenges even Andy's regenerative prowess, underscoring its formidable standing among Yumas. Yuma Burn Yuma Burn represents combustion and is shaped from magma-like material with a fiery mane. Towering in size, it can hold entities like the round table in its hand. Burn wields fire control, generating and shaping flames, and its volcanic heat can liquefy metals, contrasting with the freezing abilities of Yuma Winter, showcasing the balance of natural forces within Yumas. Burn's motivations are not just destructive, it seeks its creator, adding depth to its character and indicating Yumas have motivations akin to humans. As an embodiment of fire, Burn personifies both ruin and rebirth, illustrating fire's dualistic role in nature. Yuma Autumn Yuma Autumn resembles a giant bug, part cicada and spider, lurking in Vancouver's Stanley Park to prey on humans with intriguing life stories. She appears faceless, with six holes where eyes and a mouth should be, hiding actual human-like facial features. Her formidable legs can transform people into books, a method she employs to absorb their stories. Her chest armor is impervious to bullets, and she can spawn smaller spider-like creatures to capture humans for her collection. In battle, Autumn can absorb her spider minions to morph into an even larger form, resistant to powerful attacks like Crimson Bullet and Volcano Bullet. Reflecting the Japanese sentiment that Autumn is for reading, Autumn's speech pattern is unique, often repeating phrases, adding to her distinct character. Yuma Winter Yuma Winter embodies the essence of the coldest season, residing atop Mount Ararat as a massive, suspended ice crystal with a dark orb at its center. Its personality remains enigmatic, as it floats silently, exuding a ghostly presence. Winter wields the ability to drastically lower temperatures, potentially freezing the entire Earth, and can spontaneously summon snowstorms and blizzards. Vulnerable to fire, it's at a distinct disadvantage against the fiery Yuma Burn. Despite nearby conflicts such as those between Under and the Union, Winter remains aloof and detached, unaffected by the surrounding chaos. Yuma Summer Yuma Summer, a small, explosive-loving entity, is attracted to combustibles like gunpowder and fuel, discovered in Taiwan frequenting volatile sites such as gas stations. In appearance, it's a diminutive, firework-esque being with a first phase that's deceptively quiet. It has sub-bodies resembling shiny beetles that can enlarge into formidable insectoid forms, sharing Summer's explosive nature. Upon defeat, these sub-bodies detonate spectacularly. Both Summer and its sub-bodies can consume explosives to grow, 
with summer's second phase resembling the dragons seen in Chinese festival parades. Yuma Spring Yuma Spring resembles a friendly oni from Japanese folklore. Sporting a muscular build, bushy hair, and prominent horns, yet donning only simple black pants. Perched atop a Tokyo Tower, Spring is self-assured, considering himself the epitome of the season. Unlike other Yumas, he's not aggressive and enjoys human interaction. His power can transform people into cherry blossom trees just by contact with his petals or proximity for half an hour, with his third power stage extending this effect beyond humans. Spring wields a dice artifact, which can strip individuals of their valuables based on a game of chance. Despite his transformative abilities, Spring's demeanor is relaxed. He's more interested in human activities and the joys of life, with his actions motivated by more than whimsy. Yuma Ghost Yuma Ghost embodies the essence of the supernatural. Shrouded in a nailed white cloak, its physique is unexpectedly robust. It wields the power to become intangible, passing through solid objects, and can sever souls from bodies with its scythe. Ghost introduces astral projection to the narrative, its abilities enabling spirits to separate from their physical forms. Its ghastly appearance underscores its eerie nature, and its capacity to harvest souls sustains its existence. Yuma Galaxy Yuma Galaxy is a powerful, concept-type creature with an impressive, muscular form that showcases a miniature galaxy within its body, displaying stars and planets moving inside it. It doesn't just look strong, it has the power to bring a galaxy to life, creating stars, planets, and even aliens to inhabit them. Galaxy can also move through objects without touching them and fly super fast, shooting from the ground to outer space in no time. It's like it's part of the cosmos itself, able to navigate the universe with its incredible abilities. Yuma Color Yuma Color is a vibrant entity that embodies color itself, looking like a walking, talking art project with its paint-made body and a cloak resembling a painter's canvas attached to its head. Its face is nothing but a big mouth with fangs, and instead of regular hair, it is two braids that end in paintbrushes, topped with a palette full of paints. Color is quite full of itself, always talking about colors and acting superior. It has the cool ability to control paint, turning its body into paint or using it to transform into different shapes, including people. Color uses its brush-like braids to whip up paint for attacks or to slide around, changing shape, and it loves to speak in color metaphors, linking colors to feelings in what it says. Yuma Kindness Kane Yuma Kindness, or Kane, is an immense orca whale Yuma that serves as a sea transporter for the group under. Much larger than a typical orca, Kane resembles a living cruise ship and stands out with three eyes, for fins, and two tails. While not much is known about its personality, Kane shows a deep loyalty to under, dutifully carrying members inside its mouth and following their commands without hesitation. Kane's extraordinary size allows it to carry passengers across the ocean, and its impressive lung capacity means it only needs to surface for air once daily, unlike ordinary whales that must do so much more frequently. Yuma Seal Yuma Seal is a figure of authority among Yumas, with a self-proclaimed title of their king, known for its sealing powers. This humanoid Yuma is distinguished by its scroll-wrapped appearance and swirling pupil eyes. Seal has a strong sense of divine favor and a distaste for disrespect, coupled with a sadistic pleasure in overpowering others, like Andy. His main ability allows him to imprison both Yuma and humans within his scrolls, compressing them and even utilizing their powers, which include a variety such as Cloud, Jewel, Splash, and others. Those captured find themselves in a sticky pocket dimension, immobilized and at Seal's mercy. He is particularly fixated on sealing Andy indefinitely, resentful when compared to other Yumas, and exists to contain the undead negator along with his Yuma peers. Yuma Sick Yuma Sick personifies disease and sickness, ranking as the 10th master rule Yuma, signifying high status and power in its realm. Sick presents as a tall, fit human with a distinct X on his chest, marking his role among the master rules. His persona is akin to a conductor, delighting in the music of human suffering caused by illness, and he sees his role as essential for the world's balance by controlling the human population. 
Sick has the ability to inflict disease by his presence or by deploying his juniors against healthy targets. His master rule status grants him extraordinary regenerative abilities, with only unrepair causing him lasting harm. Additionally, Sick can capture the souls of those he infects, enhancing his power. Key points about Sick include the embodiment of sickness, worsening illnesses just by being nearby. He is one of the strongest Yumas yet appears very human. Utilizes a conductor's baton to direct his familiars for targeted infections. His power is paradoxically limited against those who cannot die, like Andy. Views his lethal actions as a necessary evil for maintaining balance in human populations. Presence alone can escalate sicknesses, highlighting his influence over health and disease. There are actually more Yumas shown and mentioned in the story that I haven't mentioned, as there isn't much information available about them apart from their appearance and names. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there exists a group called the Master Rules, who are considered to be the most powerful Yumas ever. As much as I'd like to talk more about them, there isn't much information available since they have just been recently introduced by the time I'm working on this video, other than about Yuma Sick, which I discussed earlier. As soon as more information becomes available, expect that we'll provide a breakdown of it. Thanks for watching.